Hi everyone, Timothy Ferris here with a few words about cynicism, uh, the favorite philosophy of those who have no philosophy at all. The original cynics were a school of ancient Athenian uh, philosophers, came along after Socrates, uh, which is to say after Plato, and they appear to have been concerned largely with uh, Stoicism, the philosophy that emphasizes a personal virtue as the ultimate good. The Stoics argued that one always has a decision to remain honest and true despite the blandishments of uh, maybe making some more money if you act uh, immorally or being punished or being someone trying to force you to act against your moral principles. That can always be resisted by your, your inner will. The cynics uh, appear to have been particularly concerned with pointing out the extent to which so many people fail to live up to the stoical ideal, that they can be lured away from the path of honesty and justice by uh, material rewards or punished into acting against their own sense of the, uh, of the truth and of what's just. But we don't know because uh, none of the books of the cynics has survived. What we have today is a version of cynicism that essentially declares that one can magically understand people and institutions better, and that would mean to be able to predict their behavior better, if you assume the worst of people and institutions, so that every spiritual leader is secretly corrupt. Every wealthy person must have had done something terrible to become wealthy. Every institution devoted to peace must secretly be seeking profit or personal aggrandizement or some other terrible thing. Cynicism is the assertion that if you think this way, you'll end up with more accurate uh, perceptions. It's essentially a magical philosophy, if it's a philosophy at all. There's no shortage of cynicism today. We've had a failed one-term president here in the United States just recently whose entire political career consisted of the uh, cynical calculation that if you lie constantly and constantly say that everyone else is lying and that only you are telling the truth, you can acquire some support. It's not going to be a majority of people in a democracy, and it was not in this case, but you might be able to get as many as one in three people to believe in your cynical slogans. What we have in the absence of the works of the cynics are anecdotes, particularly anecdotes about that most famous of the cynics and one of the most famous ancient philosophers of all, Diogenes. Um, everyone remembers Diogenes as the guy who went through the agora, through the marketplace, in broad daylight holding a lit lantern. Asked what he was doing, he said, looking for a man, meaning someone with the moral courage and rectitude that the Stoics felt was essential, but that cynics uh, declared to be fairly rare. Diogenes today would be a social media star. He had a brilliant understanding of how to create an impression through actions rather than words. He was a homeless man by choice. He lived uh, most of the time in a big empty uh, wine barrel with a blanket, a cup, a few other possessions. He claimed to have seen a child drinking from his palm and th had thrown away his cup because that meant that the cup, too, was not essential, and that for some reason a man should have only what is essential. The word stoic means dog-like, and it appears to have been associated with Diogenes, who performed in public uh, the functions most people perform in private, uh, urinating, defecating, masturbating, and eating. At one time he was eating, uh, sitting on the ground in the marketplace, and someone commented that he was dog-like indeed, and he said, well, you're the ones who are dog-like. You're standing around watching me eat my breakfast. So There's a great rhetorician. Another story has it that Alexander the Great, conqueror of the known world, came to see Diogenes, found him lying out in a field working on his tan, said, is there anything I can help you with. One might have said, well, you know, we could use a few more books at the philosophy library or something like that. But no, Diogenes said, yes, stand from between me and the sun. Get out of my 
way. This has always appealed to students, this kind of attitude, because, uh, you know, when you're growing up, you realize the world's complex, there's a lot to learn, it can be a bit daunting. And cynicism offers an attitude that basically says most of it's not worth learning because so much of the world is fake or somehow uh, not worthy of you. The character of Holden Caulfield in Catcher in the Rye is like that. He's simultaneously a sensitive, wounded person, and yet somehow thinks he knows that everything's fake and inferior to his wonderful spirit, largely one unblemished by education. This sort of approach of using demonstrations to make dubious points, like the dubious point that being penniless is somehow morally superior to, to uh, having a proper career and raising your children comfortably and so forth. The idea that um, you can replace knowledge and wisdom with a cynical attitude. In politics, it's known as populism, where it takes the form of uh, if you're sufficiently morally debased as a politician, you can simply tell people what they want to know, pay no attention to the facts, and see if you can't earn votes by appealing to, your, to the voters' prejudices. In the commercial world, it came to be called hucksterism, and there was a movie about it called The Hucksters, about the fact that when the radio networks came into existence, they found themselves with a huge audience of millions of people. In the daytime, were mostly women, uh, known then as housewives, who, as they were doing the work around the house in the mornings, would listen to dramas on the radio, mostly sponsored by soap companies and consequently called soap operas. The Hucksters is a film about um, an ad agency whose client owns a big soap company, and the client takes a cynical attitude. It's a wonderful part played by Sidney Greenstreet. He comes into a meeting with the ad agency to whom he's paying millions of dollars a year to lift up the sales of beauty soap, his product. And he says first that all soaps are the same. So what, it's the advertising that decides who will buy one rather than the other, not the virtue of the product. And second, that what counts are demonstrations, not words. He begins the meeting by spitting on the polished conference table. As he's wiping up the spit with his handkerchief, he says, you've just seen me do a disgusting thing, but you'll never forget it. And he's right. In fact, it's the most memorable scene in the film. And that's really the essence of the cynical attitude, as exemplified by a Diogenes, that if you t simply take a sneering superior attitude, you can appear to be uh, more knowing and uh, and better informed than you actually are. Now, you might think that in the world today with the higher levels of science and education and substantially higher than we've ever seen before, cynicism would be on the wane, and to some extent that's true. But it still attacks, and often in the very intellectual circles we associate with the universities. Decades ago, for instance, a group of top scholars published what they called a report on the limits of growth, and it made very specific predictions. Um, that by now, most of the world, most of the people in the world would have starved to death. Technology would have come to a halt because the price of certain precious metals would have become so high. And in fact, a number of bets were made against these uh, cynical predictions. And um, the authors of the Limits of Growth lost, if memory serves me, every single one of those bets. So assuming that the United Nations, the World Bank, all these anti-poverty and anti-hunger uh, efforts have made such a difference in the world in the course of my lifetime, certainly. Assuming that they're all just somehow wrong or corrupt or not telling the truth did not lead to a better prediction. And in fact, being cynical or being too optimistic uh, is no help at all in predicting the future. The only thing it'll help with that, and it's only a little help, is logic and facts. Hey, thanks for listening. See you next time. Thank you.